and there you can find all our supporting materials. So our first uh, item for this evening is our spotlight on innovation. And we have our principal from Lakeville North. Yes, this evening we are going to learn about our partnership with Minnesota School of Beauty. We welcome Principal Bergbaum from Lakeville North. Well, thank you for having us here tonight. Um, as um, Dr. Snyder said, I'm Marnie Bergbaum, principal at Lakeville North, and tonight we are the Spotlight School on Education, and we are very excited to be here tonight to share a wonderful program um, that our students have had the opportunity for the first time um, to be a part of. Um, the school is called Minnesota School of Beauty, and it's right in downtown Lakeville here. And um, starting out, the vision for the school is helping you become the best you can be. And the school thought hard about that vision, and as you can see, it's a vision that the students are gonna talk a little bit about and how it has helped shape them in this career field. One of the things that we're really excited about with this when we talk about innovation is that this program, students have the opportunity to take in their junior and senior year, and once they graduate from high school, they only have a few months and they will actually have a cosmetology license. That's the first time in the history of Lakeville where before a student graduates from high school, they almost have their career completed. And so we're really excited about that innovation uh, for, for our students, and they'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. The funding for this program was made available through our Perkins Consortium and our, our tech levy. And so we're really excited um, that, that those funds were made available. We've been looking at this opportunity for many years, and when it finally came to fruition, we had students sign up right away, as we knew they would. The program is available for juniors and seniors, and although this is the North Spotlight, um, South students are part of the program as well. In order to be involved in the program, students need to fill out an application as well as write an essay about why they would like to be in the program, and they do this through their dean at their high school. This year, the first year, we had 14 students enroll in the program. Um, of course, this is a pathway for students. Uh, they're actually looking at a career pathway in the field of cosmetology. And so the, the classes that the students take, they're actually earning the credits. They're, they're you know, earning the credits towards that, that licensure. Um, another thing that we're excited about is the fact that this is in state statute, um, that our students are career and college ready. It's part of um, the world's best workforce. And so we're providing that opportunity within our own district. It's also part of the uh, district strategic plan in regards to academic achievement. Um, this expands their opportunity to meet unique um, and personalized needs and passions. Obviously, this is personalized. It's something that's very passionate um, to each of them. Uh, it helps develop economically relevant pathways for students to be career and college ready. Um, they'll talk a little bit about the placement rate in regards to students that receive their licensure and how they become uh, productive members of society right away after getting their, their degree. Uh, personalized learning and ensure future ready skills by leveraging digital tools and resources. They've been using some of those um, in their school. And lastly, provide social emotional learning to maximize the success. Um, one of their um, instructors is gonna talk a little bit about the change that she's seen in these students um, since enrolling in, in the program. So now what I'd like to do is to introduce the two visionaries um, who are also the owners, uh, Laura Kelly and Diane Lindo. Thank you and welcome. Okay. Not as good as Marnie, so I need notes. <laughs> um, I'm Laura Kelly, and like she said, I'm one of the owners at the school. Some of the topics that we taught this year in the program in cosmetology was um, writing about Cleopatra or the flapper era or the 20s. Um, they wrote about it, they chose photos and submitted. They also did a salon project that they presented in front of the entire class. They did poster boards on dream building, their perfect salon with floor plans, business, marketing, employee compensation, benefit packages and service menus and so on. They learned facials, waxing, makeup, application, hair color, perm, sanitation, men and women's haircuts, 
and many of the faculty at North was gracious enough to be models for those haircuts, and those brave souls returned for a second time. <laughs> and the students did a fabulous job on them, amazing. But most of all, we believe that these students found life skills. We have all noticed an improvement on communications with utmost respect. Professional image became polished, as you'll see tonight. Mm -hmm. Self-esteem skyrocketed, shyness disappeared, conflict resolution skills were utilized, manners increased, doors held, were held open for our elderly clients. They would say good morning and good evening upon leaving. They have learned to do laundry, like don't mix the white and black towels together. <laughs> but, you know, we've all watched the flame ignite in them, and our job was to continue to fan those flames. And it's my pleasure to introduce our first student speaker, and her name is Brianna Dickey, and her um, question to her was, what drew her to this program? The first thing that I was drawn to was having the interest in beauty. When, then when I found out that everything I do in this program, I earned to keep all of my hours and quotas and knowledge. I have attended my junior year and will be attending my, again my senior year. So I'm working on the career of my choice for the last several years of high school. I would recommend this to anyone wanting a career in beauty. And now that I have attended this school, there will be a million more reasons why I was drawn to this program. Thank you. I didn't pay her to say that. <laughs> the second speaker is Maya Bur Burks. Maya, what does a typical day look like for you? A typical day at the school is filled with excitement, fun, and lots of education. It is a fun way to learn things. They're, the teachers are very hands-on and make it fun. We learn skin, hair, and nails. All of the other students and staff make it a great place to be. Everyone is so friendly and I really, and really care about you. I would recommend this to anyone wanting a career in beauty or to learn some valuable life lessons. Minnesota School of Beauty is the place where it all began. Nice job. Nice job, Maya. She was so nervous. <laughs> um, Kia Race Fritz, where do you see yourself moving forward and what is the end result in your participation? I see myself returning to beauty school in July and continuing out till I get my degree. And then after I graduate, I'm planning on going to the University of Northwestern for a nursing degree because I love helping people and that is my interest. And I will be having a at-home salon while working at nursing. Thank you. Well, in closing for us, I know there's a lot of misconception and belief about this industry, and I wanted to address that. I think most of us in this industry have heard things like, you should get a real job. Uh, people who go to these types of schools are the ones that can't make it in mainstream. You will never make, make enough money. You're too good for this career. You're better off getting a degree. Well, if you look statistically at the longevity of people who have done well in this industry stay until retirement. And those that go out early, it was somewhat contributed to their training to the wrong placement or their confidence level. Our placement rate is currently at 97.7%. And students are placed in their salons for their desire or their dream. I am just one living example of the opportunities in this industry. I have held my license since the early 80s. We're not gonna go how far. <laughs> um, it helped me pay off my student loans in, with my business degree and my associate's degree. I've held positions because of my cosmetology license like executive director at a modeling school and agency. I've been a makeup artist for TV and film. Where I began right out of high school, I find myself back in this industry owning a school and giving back to this industry that made me who I am today. These students here this evening are right where I was with, but with a lot more opportunities today. And we're excited and looking forward to giving updates with the students who are, re who are going to be returning in July and September. So stay tuned for their career placement and the journey that we hope to be a part of throughout their career. So thank all of you for allowing us to help our youth become the best that they can be. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, I have to say that there is a gazillion niches that um, the people in your industry um, come up with. And so, you know, my first thought was, you know, you're going to become a nurse, but as a caregiver, um, what a wonderful way to be able to help the elderly with some of their needs, their hair needs, especially if they have a special birthday party or something that they're going to be going to. I know that some, um, what I would call stay-at-home moms, do it on the weekends for weddings. It's a niche. There's a lot of weddings that need the whole hair, makeup, the whole deal done up, and that's how they make the living for the family. So, I mean, there's just a gazillion ways, and the technology that's coming about for your industry is incredible. And um, it's always amazing to me how much money we all spend uh, in your <laughs> industry. So your job's in demand because we're always looking for people that are good. And, um, and yours is a never-ending learning cycle. That's the amazing part about your job is that you constantly are having to keep up with um, trends and uh, be able to make those interesting haircuts that we see sometimes. So <laughs> do board members have any other comments or questions? Uh, Director Erickson? I noticed you've been doing some remodeling. Maybe you could give us a, a quick overview on some of the improvements that you're making. We have been doing some remodeling. We actually downsized the school a bit. Um, we're still about 6,000 square feet. We were at 11. What we noticed is that we had way too many um, chairs and too many places for students to scatter. We want them to feel like they're more like in a salon so that we can really work on professionalism. We can work on um, conflict resolution more. So we kind of became a little bit closer. DeVita, which is the dialysis, is now going to be next to us. And we think it's going to be a great fit because hopefully we'll get some more clients out of it. Um, and then um, as far as our school, and I encourage everybody to come by and see it, looks phenomenal. We even created a wall, didn't we girls? Mm -hmm. The wall of beauty where we are this year starting, and we've always wanted to do this, but we're going to take before pictures of the students when they start because they certainly change when they leave. And then they will also have a graduation. We have a huge wall that this is gonna to happen to. So the school looks great and we still, uh, the wonderful thing about this remodel was we were able to give the high school program in their classroom stations that each one will individually have a station while attending to give them the feel of the salon as well. So come by and see us. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. Director Kelleher. So to the students, I want to congratulate you for stepping up and taking this opportunity on. Um, the, we have so many opportunities in our schools and many students do, just don't take hold and, um, and you know, opt to do those opportunities. So for you to step up and work on this and toward this goal, it's really incredible. All three of you did a wonderful job with your presentation today. You look, you present yourself very, very well. You're gonna go a long way, so congratulations with this opportunity. And to, to you two ladies, and Marnie, thank you so much for working on this. To think outside the four walls of our buildings to be able to bring education to the kids and um, still help them graduate but meet their long-time goals. It's really wonderful, so thank you all for doing that. Thank you. And I've been there and I've had my hair cut and nails done. <laughs> <laughs> Director Lewis. How many students do you routinely think that you might be able to have? To accommodate? Yes, like from the high school versus your regular population. Well, for you know, it's really, it varies, but we okay. have the ability to have at least, we will say comfortably 85 students at one okay. time. Okay. Um, and we have right now that are actually registered well, number six with Kia that will be coming back from the high school program in July. All right. Which is, is great. Is this a rolling, um, I don't want to say a rolling admissions, but if a student chose to come uh, second semester, is that a possibility or do they need to go fall? <laughs> it, is, it is as of last year, thanks to Marnie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we do what we can to accommodate and we actually had the second semester, three or four new students. We were a little concerned how we would integrate them in, yes. how it would work out, but I'll tell you what, it worked out fabulously. Wonderful. Everybody opened up their arms. Do you remember that? <laughs> and they all still became that 
family and group that worked together. So it, it turned out great, and it was not an issue at all. Well, I just want to congratulate you all on the work you're doing, and um, Ms. Birkbaum and all the students on, on this, and I just think it is a fabulous and incredibly fruitful and productive partnership for Lakeville Schools to be aligned and working with the Minneapolis, Minnesota School of Beauty. So Thank you, and I, and I really you. want to thank Marnie, too, for seeing and believing our, in our vision as well. So, so thank you very much. Director Skelly? And just to follow up, I think that might be the... Uh, the key is the relationship between your business and the school district and tying in with uh, our principal at Lakeville North, Marty Bergfam. I know she, this is not a new partnership. Uh -uh. This has been going on for a while and it's unique to Lakeville. This is something that students in Lakeville can have access to that maybe students in adjoining districts don't have access to. So it is a, a nice feature and I think Director Kelleher mentioned that as well in her, pre her remarks. So. Um, I think it's really appropriate that you have that as a spotlight segment here at, at a school board meeting because it is a, um, it is something that's very unique to Lakeville and something these students have access to that if the parents just happen to live in another city, maybe they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jim. Can we shake their hands? Yes, yeah. would yeah, you yeah. girls mind coming up so we can shake your hands and congratulate you? Thank you. <laughs> Good luck in your nursing career. Can you do anything with us? Anything? Thank you. 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 Thank you.